everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Yeah, no, I did it right. I'm sitting down in my gallery and that in my studio. That never happens. But I thought I would give you um, an update or actually show you a, a, another Monday in the gallery, in the studio. Um, it might become a trend. I think that was my last video on Monday in the gallery. So I am working on 12 by 12 paintings right now, as well as everything else. If you look around me, you're gonna see, there's all sorts of stuff all over the floor. There's things that I'm working on, but I thought that I would do a little video again um, of what I'm working on because sometimes content, right, is, is what you're like, oh, I, I gotta worry about content. I gotta worry about what to show people. And I think what I wanna do with this channel is simply show the ins and outs of a working artist. And, and it's only two degrees um, Celsius. We're in Canada, so we do Celsius. It's only two degrees outside. So I don't, I, I won't bore you with my garden, but you are gonna get my garden and, and what, how influential it is to me when it gets a little warmer. The daffodils are up. We're, we're probably a good two to three weeks ahead because of the weird winter that we had. But my, my kind of motto for this channel has been, um, living and working artfully. And my garden is part of how I live. And I love to, I love to do the work in it. And I will show you that journey. We'll document 2024 garden, Julia's garden as we go. But today, get right to it. Today I'm working on 12 by 12s. So I run um, an international online show called The Square Foot Show. If you follow us, it's, um, if you want to follow us, it's squarefootshow.com. On Instagram, squarefootshow, squarefootshow. And we represent all sorts of artists. So if you're an artist, you're gonna wanna swing over there and apply for our shows because we've got, we're ramping it up. We are ramping it up next year. Um, in 2025, we we have some lofty goals and we want you to participate. We Our goal at Squiffer Show is to lift up artists, just like my goal is here, is to lift you up, get you into the groove, get you confident, get you selling, get you knowing that you can sell, and building your audience. So that's what SquareFootShow.com is. So I also participate in the Square Foot Show. My 12 by 12 paintings, in here, I'll grab one. My 12 by 12 paintings, here's one, sell for $600. On, when I have a square foot sale online, they sell for 350 Canadian dollars, 300 US dollars, and the Square Foot Show is a race. It always is. We sell the most in the first uh, four hours, first 15 to 20 minutes. It's wildly insane. And uh, we reached, what did we reach? We reached the million dollar mark last year or in the last two sales. So we're very excited. We have sold over a million dollars worth of Square Foot paintings for artists just like you or collectors. If you're a collector and you're following me, you're gonna find amazing artists uh, at the Square Foot Show. This is actually the prize. If you sign up for Square Foot Show at squarefootshow.com, you could win this in April. So I'm building these little canvases. So I, there's that so again, if you watch me, I seem to like that word. I work with 12 by 12 canvases. They are gallery depth, so they're about two inches, and I prime them all red. I love to work on red. It gets rid of the scary white. And what I do, and I'm gonna see if I can show you. See if you, if you can see what I can what I do. I'm working 
a landscape show for this April. Uh, this April is a landscape show. So we are doing, um, all the artists are contributing art based on landscape and their interpretation. I work from photos. I go on a lot of hikes. Is that my husband? Um, I go on a lot of hikes. I take a lot of photos. I'm usually the last one on the hike and they're like, where's Julia? Here's a mis um, an Algonquin image. And then I print them off and I store them in drawers in my studio. And then every once in a while, if I need inspiration, I'll make a coffee and I'll sit down and I'll take them out and I'll get inspired. My next step is, so my next step, let me see which one. I wanna show you what I'm working on here. Let me see, okay. So there's the, here's a picture that I loved. It just kind of grabbed me today. And usually what I do is I take plain car, uh, chalkboard chalk and I chalk onto the canvas and then I use a thin cranberry, cranberry um, paint to solidify the drawing. So in this, this one I went right to the cranberry paint, but this one what I normally would do would be to chalk my image in and then use a thin, <laughs> reach over, a thin cranberry paint. So this is Quinacridone Crimson by Golden, almost done. So now I've just added water to the pot and I go over the image or the chalk drawing to solidify it and get it ready for painting. So this is going to be a 12 by 12 for the landscape show. And this is the reference. A reference material could be so many things. Um, I need to get a little water for this paint. Okay. Reference material can be used over and over and over again. As long as you are reinterpreting it, um, maybe you're going in really tight. Maybe you're using the whole image. So I'm gonna do a little sketch with you from this picture that I took when I was in BC, in uh, just on a hike by my son's house. So here's my reference photo. I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna see if I can draw with you while I look, okay? So I'm gonna be looking down at my reference, but I'm gonna draw this and I'm gonna see if I can make sure that you see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's my reference photo. Here's the canvas. So let me, I'm gonna start with this, this little tree that's in the middle and I'll show you the reference again after I do this. So here we go. I've got to stop talking because I can't think and draw at the same time. I can't talk and, and draw at the same time. So then I want this strong trunk up there. And with the chalk, I mostly just capture shape. I don't give a lot of detail, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I identify like light sources. And then, so the important thing with a forest like this is to give a variety of sizes of trunks. I don't want a forest full of all the same size. Okay, there's my basis for the drawing. 
Now, I'm going to find that little paintbrush again. And I'll show you how I solidify the drawing. Okay. So usually when it's a drawing like this, I will outline and, and get my tree trunks in place. The divisions of the canvas so I know where the main trees are. I'm building shapes and giving kind of an idea of where it's going. And I change stuff. I'm the artist, right? So I can change things. I don't have to include every tree that I see. And I'm giving a bend in the tree so that it's not just these straight up boring kind of shapes. And here is where I might identify where there's some knots in the tree and I might identify this is where the tree is lit. So the light source is kind of coming from this way. So I need to acknowledge that the light source, this tree is in the foreground and the light's coming through here and hitting this tree right there. A smaller tree back here and if you notice I didn't paint on the chalk line I corrected my drawing because I wanted it to be very different um, branch or trunk width and then now that we've got gotten into some smaller trees there's gonna be a few smaller branches that I'm gonna to want to show. And again, guys, honestly, I'm just solidifying my drawing because if I painted over this chalk, it would go away and I wouldn't know where the next thing was. So here is how I start a 12 by 12. So I think I'm gonna set up my camera and I will paint this one with you. So I have set this up. I will try not to move it or knock my camera, but I've set it up so you can see it and my palette. And I am missing a color. Okay, the setup might be slightly different, slightly, because when I went to get my Van Dyke Brown, I knocked everything over, my camera landed into my paint, and I made a general mess. But here we go. I'm gonna interpret this this photo image into this 12 by 12. Here we go, enjoy. And a lot of you often ask if I can show my palette, so I've tried my best here to kind of give you an indication of how I pick up paint. So you'll have to just watch and see, okay guys? All right. So I usually start with the foreground the, or the middle ground. I don't often paint the background first. So I've started with the strong tree form and built that. So this in my image is kind of really in the foreground and it's not lit 
the light seems to be coming, you know, through the back and hitting this tree. So we'll see if I can capture that, but I'm seeing some nice blues in this trunk. So, okay.
here it is, color blocked. And you know what? I don't know if I'll do a lot more. I will do, you know, I will fill the top, then I'll do the sides and the bottom, but I don't know if I'll do a lot more. I will let this dry until tomorrow and see where I need to lighten it because acrylics lighten up. But there's my reference right there. And that's how I interpreted it loosely. Here's my paint palette that I started from. So this paint palette, it's Monday. So this is gonna last me, you know, a few days and I'll spritz it with water and seal it before I go in for the evening. But there you go. There is the 12 by 12 painting getting ready for my square foot show.